He joins us now with an interview. I, what time? It must be what? 2 a.m. 2 p.m. There, I guess. I think if my math is right. Uh, looks like a warm, nice day there, uh, Governor. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, Scott. It's great to be out here. I can tell you, there's a. Um, there's a lot of interest in uh, what's going on in the United States out here, as well as what's going on in Florida. As you know, Florida's economy is doing strong. A lot of people moving, a lot of businesses. So we're going to see more investment uh, from the Japanese, from the South Koreans, and of course on down the line. But one thing that people are concerned about out here, of course, is the rise of the CCP. And they're concerned about the security situation. One of the things they complimented us on in Florida is I'm going to be signing legislation very soon, eliminating the, uh, the possibility of CCP land purchases in Florida. No farmland, no land near critical infrastructure, none. Yeah. Well, uh, by the way, that is an issue that very few people know about. What, you, what the governor is referring to is the fact that you have uh, Chinese foreign nationals. They've been buying up hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland, ranch land, and land near military installations. Uh, Governor, that can't happen, and that land that has already been purchased, as far as I'm concerned, needs to be taken back and put in the hands of American farmers and American ranchers. Uh, I'm glad you're talking about it. I want to ask you specifically, though, I call this a new axis of evil. That is China, Russia, our number one, number two geopolitical foe, and now Iran. And then the, the communist Chinese brokering a deal with our former ally, or I thought who was our ally, Saudi Arabia and Iran, and now Syria and Iran. And then we see the UAE seems to be siding with, with Putin, and Egypt seems to be siding with Putin. Uh, to me, we're looking at a, a new world order uh, evolving right in front of our eyes, and I don't think we have a president is, that is even engaged. No, Sean. I mean, I think if you look at what Xi Jinping has done, he is on the move around the world. And you mentioned the Saudi Iran. I don't know what is ultimately going to come of that. But the fact that they even had that meeting uh, with China brokering that, that's a huge failure on the part of the Biden administration part. And then, of course, in the Western Hemisphere, we have the CCP trying to get involved with countries. You know, we just recently had a country in Central America flip from recognizing Taiwan to now siding with the CCP. So uh, they are flexing muscle. And I think the fact that uh, Biden has been very weak on the world stage uh, is emboldening them to do even more. Let, let me ask you this. Do you think that, well, what, the, what should America be doing right now to stop this before China, uh, for example, fulfills their territorial ambitions and t takes Taiwan? What should we do to break up this axis of evil before they become even more united? Well, I think with someone like Xi Jinping, he responds to strength. And I think clearly we don't have a lot of strength under Biden. But I think fortifying our forces in the Pacific, I think we need more naval uh, strength to be able to project power. And we cannot allow the CCP to produce every critical uh, part of our economy. We re rely on them for almost everything. We need to bring that back to America so we're producing it here in the United States and we're not at the whim of the communist Chinese. There were two to three separate occasions when Joe Biden was asked about what happens if the communist Chinese invade Taiwan. His initial reaction was that we would stand with them. Then he backs off every single time. What is the right answer? Well, we've had a long-standing U.S. policy uh, with respect to Taiwan under Taiwan Relations Act. Uh, I think that that policy should be continued. Uh, but ultimately, I think you're looking at a Chinese leader who's much more ambitious than some of his predecessors. And when you combine China's strength, his ambitions with Biden's weakness, that leads us to a very, very dangerous situation. Governor, I got to ask the obvious question. A lot of people wondering if, in fact, you are planning to make an announcement and get in this presidential race, this nomination, uh, which would include Donald Trump. And I have one follow up. 
So I've said from the election of 2022, when people started asking me, uh, we got a, a legislative session that we're working on. We've got a few more weeks to go with that. We're going to be putting up a lot of wins on the board. And so I'm not going to be making any announcements before that's concluded. OK, are you leaning one way or another? Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that got a good, that got a good chuckle. The last time I interviewed President Trump, I was there in 2018, and I always saw the two of you as friends. And I said to him, I, a very simple question I asked him, I said, what happened? And I think it's only fair to ask you the same question, what do you think happened? You know, I enjoyed supporting him when he was president. We worked really hard for his reelection in Florida. And I always had a good relationship with him. And then once the midterm election happened, he started taking shots at me. I didn't really do anything to do it except do a good job. But that's fine. I mean, Sean, you know, when you're making things happen, you take incoming from a variety of targets. So that's just the nature of the business. And I'm happy to, I'm happy to stand strong and do what's right. All right, Governor, have a great trip. We appreciate you joining us. Enjoy the, the daylight there. Uh, it's night here in uh, New York. By the way, the only normal New Yorkers that stayed that are moving to Florida probably in a few months are here. But uh, thanks for being with us.